Hello and welcome to Knit Night 63 of the Sweet Land and Knits podcast. My name is Christine and I'm coming to you from outside of Toronto, Ontario in Canada. Today is May the 23rd. It's Sunday morning. It's a very muggy Sunday morning. Uh, it is a high of 28 degrees Celsius right now. Very, very humid. I am outside just trying to make the best of it. Um, I'm sorry if my face is like dribbling with um, perspiration down and I can't uh, do much about it. But uh, I did want to be outside uh, to record just because it's so much nicer. I'm sorry if you can hear all of the uh, lawnmowers and other things going on in our neighboring uh, households uh, because yeah it's busy on a Sunday morning sometimes um, welcome if you are new and welcome to those that are returning um, thank you so much for being here and for uh, being part of my uh, knitting crocheting sewing and whatever other craft or fancy adventures that I dabble in and uh, I have really enjoyed um, sharing those with you um, and uh, today I have a little bit of a chatter um, some works in progress that I'd like to share one project that I will be casting on very soon and um, a few lovely things just just a bit um lovely things and um maybe i if i have time i would share a book uh that i have been listening to as well so why don't you grab a nice cup of something to drink i can't say tea or coffee today it is pretty hot for me so just water for me but um something nice to drink um your favorite project and let's get started so again thank you very much for your lovely comments that uh, all of you left me on the last podcast it had been a while since i podcasted at that point and again now it's about a month um and i think this is working out a lot better for me just being being able to uh take it a little slow and uh not stress or strain rather not strain my arm uh, and shoulder as much and it is definitely helping so um yes and that being said i do not have a finished object uh yet uh, but i'm working on my uh, different projects and uh yes i will be sharing them with you uh what else can i say um it has been it has been a busy month i can't believe may has gone by so fast uh, but it's a little better than april was april was just a blur um, it's nice to be able to come out to the garden and spend time uh, we've managed to get our veggies in uh, just a few um, and i like doing that just for my own you know not with any luck really but just more so that i can have something to do and focus on and work towards for this summer i guess um i plant just a few annuals um just for a little bit of color and instant gratification but uh all of the flowers are definitely coming out i'll do a little clip here of a bird song that i get to um enjoy every morning and evening um, the birds, we have quite a, uh, how do I say, a mix of birds that visit our garden. We have um, planted, well, my husband's very fond of putting in um, bird um, feed in different parts of the garden so that we get them visiting in different parts. And in the mornings and the evenings, you just get like a full, uh, you know, choir or orchestra of, of them so i was able to take a little bit of footage it's not so much for the sight but the sounds of the bird song so i hope you enjoy that
have to say I am very very sorry for those of you who had to endure my oh very I don't know um down and drab talk um the last uh, podcast it was just like I was listening to myself when I was um, editing and I thought, oh gosh, I sound so down and, you know, but I guess that's how I was feeling at the time too. Um, but I, I do apologize. It's, I try to, I try to uh, spread some cheer if I can in, in a, or try to be a little positive whenever I can, but there are moments when even, uh, that that will be difficult and I guess it came across in, in the podcast so I do apologize for that uh, as far as um, the COVID situation um, it's really nice to hear that uh, uh, parts of the world are sort of getting back to a little bit of uh, normality um, as we would have known it um, but unfortunately here we are still in lockdown and um, just over the last week and a half, I believe, uh, they have now extended the lockdown to from June to July. So kids are definitely completing the rest of the year online rather than uh, any form of a hybrid or going into school format that they had options for. Um, a few months ago um, but the good news is that uh, the COVID vaccine is now available a lot more uh, around um, different parts of Toronto and uh, we were also able to receive our vaccines uh, the first dose but the second dose is going to be like 16 weeks away sometime in September um, but it's good that it's rolling out and um, more people are able to get it if you wanted it and uh, I have to say that it's kind of sad to hear that a lot of people in some parts of the world even though they have the opportunity to take the vaccine are a little hesitant to or maybe um uh yeah i, I don't know uh, not getting there in time to get it or something like that but um yep the sooner everyone else gets vaccinated i guess we are all just um you know, it's just gonna be another thing under our belt and we can handle it better, like the flu or, or all of the other things that we've gone through in the past. Anyways, enough of that. Uh, the sun's starting to hit my face, so you might find me squinting a little bit. Um, I will try to keep my eyes open. <laughs> um, but yes, thank you. Thank you very much for all of your support and for just being there and for your comments. It means a lot to me and being able to read those comments to be able to respond and just interact with you guys is why I love doing this um, we're still a very small group but I do enjoy the interaction and I think you know just having that format of sitting down and able to just chat while you guys are working on a project and hopefully able to share that with me and uh, that is um, that is really the fun of it so uh, let's move right into works in progress. First off, here is a work in progress that I have shown you maybe a, oh, I'm sure over a year ago. And it was one that um, I picked up and put down a few times only because um, it's, it's a technique that is not very familiar to me, brioche knitting. And I can say that every time I put it down, I should not leave so much of a gap in picking it up again because then I forget and then um, I'm almost certain that I would make a mistake and then I need to start over again. So this is this has been the this has been the uh, dilemma that I faced with this project a couple of times. And but here we are. This is the sizzle pop shawl by Leslie Ann Robinson, I think. I will put up the, the name on the screen just to be sure I got it right. And um, it is a brioche shawl and I am doing it in three yarns actually. So um, it is, um, you have the right side uh, on both sides. If, is that how you say it? 
like you can wear it on both sides and that's the fun part about this pattern as well as most brioche knitting I think um, so I was up to about here and then I tried to continue and made mistakes I had to rip it back and so I literally started almost all over again I, I think I started from here somewhere um, or maybe here where you can see this little bump I'm not sure but somewhere somewhere around here and then I knit and then I was thinking that I wanted a really nice I, it's a very cozy shawl like it's very squishy so I wanted it to be a nice large shawl that I would wear just to feel cozy really and it's got some cheerful color on the back if I wanted to wear it on that side apologies for all the yarns yarn ends but um yep there you go that is th the shot of it um so i had uh i had two skeins of this color but i thought it was a little dull and you couldn't really see the the um, the patterning on the side too well so i found another uh skein that i'd had for a very long time i picked up at a alpaca farm years ago must be about four four years four or five years uh, one summer when we were down in Hershey Pennsylvania and uh, I decided to use that yarn and I thought the blue and the yellow goes together a little uh, more of a contrast and you can see it's slightly better so it has this denim look right now but uh, and I'm thinking that might be versatile as well we'll see but either way I, I do like the yellow and I think it's a good pop-up color but, and so the yarns are this is the this is the yarn that I was talking about um, this is the blue and it is Paca Peds 20% uh, Super Fine Alpaca 65% Super Wash Nylon sorry wool and 15% nylon um, it's by the Alpaca Yarn Company. Let me just show that to you. And I don't think it has a color name, colorway. Um, but there is. Oh, it does actually. It's right here. It's the color iris. And that's the eye. So it's a tonal blue. And uh, yeah, I think it captures the color of iris very, very well that's the first yarn or that's the blue yarn the gray is by little red kettle head um, and it's in the stout socks BFL base uh, by Paula and uh, the color is stormy sky and it's from the 2017 batch so quite old um, but yeah there you go and I think I got this at a frolic uh, knitters frolic uh, yarn festival here in Toronto and the third is the the very cheerful yellow and I believe this is called don't call me honey by her flat Regina who no longer dies or yeah and and I have two skeins of this so I really did want to use it, this yarn and so, yeah, I have quite a bit left in the yarn, but I can tell you, so what I do now is because it does require quite a bit of concentration with the chart, um, I just do about one row. And the way it works in brioche is you have one row of pattern followed by three rows that you would always do with every three turns for that two rows of knitting that you have to do so it's like double knitting where you go with one you have two colors so one yarn you work across and then the second yarn again you work across and then you come back with those two yarns one at a time so you have four rows for every row of pattern and so it's a little slow going but I have been enjoying doing that and so what I do is I, I try to alternate between this pa this project and something else every other day so that I don't forget brioche. <laughs> All right, so now we'll move on to the next work in progress. Uh, so the other two works in progress I'm not going to share with you because I have uh, shown it to you in the past is my uh, Elton Cardigan uh, by Hohi Locatelli and I am uh, very near uh, done with both sleeves 
and uh, so it's just a lot of stocking net and sleeve netting really and then after the sleeve I would have the, the button band uh, without buttons but a band to go around the neck band and then I would be done with it so I am slowly working on that as well it has two yarns it's more hair it's a little lighter so it's nice to knit now when it's um, warm <laughs> and uh, it is a little bit I would say of my relaxing knit just because it's just stocking knit and knitting the other project I am also working on that I will share with you the next time is that I have been making a little progress on painted honeycombs uh, shawl by Stephen uh, West and uh, yes I am continuing to make a little progress in that too but I will share that with you the next time the next project that I am um, going to share with you is not really a project that's on my needles as yet, but um, I did uh, do swatches for this pattern because it has uh, been one that has caught my eye for a very long time and wow. I've uh, been pattern watching it like I do um, with with the ones that are really popular and just seeing, you know, do I, how how much I like it and uh, how to make it work for me and will it, will it fit me and what are some of the other comments that others have who have knitted it and um, it is the Love Note by Tin Can Knits and they, um, the, the one that really caught my eye was uh, the version that Kaz from the We So and So podcast had shared and I really liked it on her and, um, and uh, you know I, I chat with her a little bit about the sizing and and how she um went about it like whatever what the modifications were and stuff and so i picked up the pattern and um i did a swatch for it so i'd recorded this little segment uh with my last podcast but because my last podcast was so long i decided not to put it in there so i'm going to insert it in here just to show you um just share with you a little bit about the swatching and we'll come back um so Everyone who has heard of the Tin Can Knits um, Love Note knows that it is a very airy, lovely lace pattern. It's, it's a little bit of a cropped version, which I will not be knitting. Uh, but I saw Kaz of uh, the We So and So podcast and her, her maybe second or third version of the Love Note. It was a very soft, pale pink very soft pink uh with the mohair and it was just beautiful and she had knitted she said a few inches longer and it just sat so it, it went so well with her body i mean she looked really good in it and so um i had to cast this on but of course not to cast it on because i have the yarn i have the main yarn but i was not sure whether I wanted to do the mohair or not because um, I had, you know, I'm just working on the Elton, it's got mohair, so do I need to put mohair in another garment was my thinking. Anyways, so I started off as all knitters do. <laughs> I shouldn't say that most, you know, some people don't ever swatch. I don't swatch for some things, but I did for this one. Because I wanted to see the needles. Okay, let's, yeah, let's start with the needles. The needles that the pattern calls for are six millimeter needles. I'm not a fan of knitting on big needles because um, I don't knit as much. I tend to stay between, uh, yeah, five millimeters and under maybe. But this is six millimeters. And I had the needles. Uh, these are Knit Picks, the nickel plated set that I was talking about. And um, I had the needles and I had the yarn that I wanted to use. Um, and it, I think it'll be perfect, but it's just, I was trying to figure out whether we needed, whether I wanted to knit it with the mohair or not. So here's my gauge swatch. And so the first bit is just the yarn in itself and you can see it's, it's it's a very soft yarn and it has its own sheen to it like it, it is a uh it's a single ply 
So I was a little concerned about that as well because it'll pill. It'll pill like crazy and it is going to be by just by itself. It's such a loose gauge. As you can see, I've not watched, I've not uh, washed swatch, but I just wanted to get an idea of it. The second here, the second stripe, as you can see, is with mohair. And uh, what I used was just a little bit of leftover. Uh, this is Drops Air, uh, the silk uh, mohair that I had used for my Snow uh, Kisses hat. And uh, I just used that to see how it looks with the mohair. And um, I was like, okay, you know what, that, that's better, but it's just definitely not the color of mohair that I wanted. Uh, I wanted something a little different. Um, so yeah, I I'll tell you that in just a bit. But um, then I thought, you know, what happens if I, if I don't use these needles, if I go down a needle size? And so that's what I did. I tried 5.5 5 millimeters and I tried to do that just to see how that, uh, how the fabric works out. And I can tell you, sometimes you just need to trust the designer <laughs> and, uh, I can see why because uh, this is just too dense of a fabric and uh, um, the love note just would be better with the six millimeter um, needles. So yes, so I've decided that it's going to be six millimeter needles with mohair uh, because the without mohair is just too uh, loose of a fabric for me. And also the other issue is the that it's a single ply yarn. And then the 5.5 millimeters is just too dense of a fabric. And I'm thinking that I would have to worry about sizing and, you know, um, it might not have the same fit as I wanted. So yes, that's what I did. So I did uh, the gauge swash and, and I, I did the gauge swatch and I really enjoyed knitting on it. This is like the, the first um, introduction back into my crafting and I did this and I loved it because um, I could uh, just do a little bit like a few rows and you know take a rest and after a little while do a few more rows and that was it. So I have five skeins of this yarn. And this is the one I'm gonna use for the body. It's Knit Picks uh, Diadem Fingering. And what that make is, is 50% baby alpaca, 50% mulberry silk. It has 329 yards for 100 grams. And it is so, so, so soft. Oh. It, it, and I, I think it was a sale that I got this on uh, and I got this color is a very neutral color and uh, what's the color oh pearl it says it right there pearl the colorway is pearl and it is just a very neutral color and I think the love note will look really nice in that I was thinking that, you know, because it has such a halo in itself that this would be enough. But as you can see, um, it looks a little too loose, the fabric. And uh, because it's a single ply, I think plying it uh, with uh, mohair, uh, knitting it together with a mohair will also strengthen the uh, fabric a little bit more. So the mohair, uh, like I said, I didn't want to use the because it's very, very dull, I, this color. And, it, you know, I don't think I would enjoy it. So I wanted something a little bit more of, with a color in it. So I've, I've ordered some uh, yarn that should be coming. And it's going to be like a um, coffee color uh, to it. So it, I'm hoping that it gives it a nice tint of... Uh, with this yarn. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. So yes, 
uh, since then uh, I have to say the yarn has arrived the mohair and this is part of my lovely things as well it is yarn that I had ordered actually just from Amazon because everything's still closed here with lockdown and ordering yarn online um, and shipping um, costs and I have uh, Amazon Prime so uh, I found a few yarn um, uh, yarn options available on Amazon and I thought this was be, this would be a good opportunity to share uh, to try it out and so this is a yarn unfortunately um, I'll put the English names up on the screen as it showed on Amazon but the ball band is um, probably in I want to say maybe Cantonese or Mandarin, but I, I'm not sure. Um, not that I would be able to read it, but here it is. This is the ball band. And uh, I will put the details of the yarn on screen. So this is the color I chose and it's like a mocha color. And so when I, I, when I knit it up with uh, the, the main color, this is the main color that I've chosen to use, as I said, and this is the Diadem Fingering uh, in the Pearl Colorway by Knit Picks, and it is so soft and so squishy. Um, but like I mentioned, it is a one, it's a single ply yarn, and so um, just to reduce the amount of pilling that it has, and just to give it a little bit more fluff, <laughs> fluffy texture to it or look to it maybe I thought I wanted to pair it with a mohair and I didn't want to go for the same color because I wanted something a little bit um, that was that had a little tinge of a color to it without really a color and so I thought this mocha would go well and so I, I did try out a sample of that but I don't have a picture to show you but this is what I'm gonna be casting on so um, that brings me to, um, oh, and if I did not mention this in the video, which I probably did, but the, the needles I'll be using are the Knit Picks and they are six millimeter needles. So it's gonna be a larger size than I've knit for a long time. So um, yeah, let's see how it goes with that. And I'm, I'm hoping it won't be too hard on the hands just because I'm, I'm more used to this, the smaller needles. Can you hear the bird song? I don't know if you can, but yeah, it's it's, it's really nice. I, I enjoy that. Um, yes, so those are both my um, new cast on, which I will be doing as well as lovely things. I would love to hear what you are most fond of knitting. Um, I, I tend to show socks and shawls, um, hats, and mittens, and garments. However, I am a small knitter and it takes me a long time. Um, so I have heard a few of you say that garment knitting takes a very long time. So I thought it would be just uh, nice for us to be able to uh, have a knit along that is a year long and that way hopefully we'll be able to get a garment in there and uh, you know if you can do more than one then sure why not so why don't you join me in uh, knit along that's going to start on june the first that'll give you plenty of time to grab some yarn um hopefully and uh I'll decide on a pattern and it can be any pattern any yarn um any color um, the only thing I would ask is that it be an adult size garment and uh, that we can actually we can cast it on in June uh, if June is not your month to cast on if you have a work in progress 50% uh, or less then why don't you join in as well and I would love for you to share that with me. We can, you can share both here on YouTube as well as in our Ravelry group. Uh, if you are unable to join in uh, to Ravelry, um, maybe you can send me an email and I'll put the email address down below and you can share pictures and uh, your um, progress or whatever you, comment you want to say and I can put it on to Ravelry on your behalf 
so that when it time comes time to pick prizes uh, I'll do one for the chatter and one for the finished objects and um, well it's a year from now so I will definitely be updating you with all of that but um, that is my plan and uh, yes yeah, so we can have a knit along so I haven't come up with a name for the knit along yet but I will I will but for now let's just cast on for June 1st and it can be the year-long garment knit along that's a very long name <laughs> but yeah let's let's go with that or something if I can think of something better um, yes so I would really love for you to join in and uh, if even if you are working on a new technique in a garment or I would it would be really nice if you could share that with us um, it doesn't have to be a paid for pattern it can be a free pattern there are lots of lovely free patterns and if you wanted some suggestions on basic cardigans or jumpers or something like that um, I have a few that I can uh, suggest and maybe I'll do that on the next podcast so that has been um yes as far as my knitting and I've really been enjoying that um as far as listening to audiobooks which I do enjoy doing as well I've enjoyed um recently a new to me author Tana French and I believe the first one I listened to was The Searcher and right now I'm listening to The Trespasser and um, I really enjoyed The Searcher. It was nice. It had a very nice uh, storytelling to it, as well as some suspense. And, uh, in, you know, it keeps you intrigued to want to know a little bit more about the story. A little sad ending, quite quite a sad ending. But um, it was it was very nice. Uh, to, o overall, I did enjoy that book. So I picked up the next book, which which is the trespasser I believe so that's the one I'm listening to now um, and other books that I have read and enjoyed uh, over the last month is um, a continuation of Helen Fields um, the DI uh, is it DI I think it's DI Kavanaugh um, series and um, it's a little gruesome <laughs> um, uh, one of those psychological thrillers with a lot of gore in it so uh, not for the faint of heart uh, but but uh, yes I did uh, I have to say like I have been enjoying so I'm, I'm on to the one the perfect perfect kill I think it is right now I don't even know which one but it's like the fourth or the fifth in the series and um, I have put that on pause because I enjoyed the Tana French uh, a little bit more at the time. So I just picked up the next Tana French. But those are the books I'm enjoying. And uh, one that I would highly recommend to read. It was one that I read uh, or listened to a while ago. But it is The Henna, Art the Henna Artist by Alka Joshi. Um, she is an Indo-American author and she captures... Uh, she captures the sights, the sounds, and uh, just um, gives a really good story as well. Um, and it is one that I highly, highly recommend. The reason she's on my radar right now again is because her second book is uh, out, I think. I want to say it's out or it's going to be out, but she's been doing a lot of um, uh, book uh, tours and she has one in Toronto but uh, sadly I won't be able to go but uh, it is one that I uh, would uh, is definitely on my list to read. I hope all of you have been keeping well and taking care of yourselves and uh, trying to find um, silver linings and all of the things around us as much as possible and um, I hope you have a wonderful week ahead of you. You know this weekend is um, our long weekend for uh, Victoria Day and we celebrate Queen Victoria's birthday I think in the month of May but it, we have it in the third week of May and um, so tomorrow is a holiday as well. We don't have plans for tomorrow because well there's nowhere to go really but uh, I will have my parents over later today and we'll be visiting my uh, 
brother for a barbecue outside, uh, social distanced. Um, just hopefully, if the you know it doesn't rain, <laughs> we'll be able to enjoy a little bit of that. So um, yes, that's what's been going on, and uh, I hope to catch up with you in a few weeks with uh, maybe updates on my. Um, projects and uh, by then we should have a cast on as well for the love note so i hope you will join me i will open up a thread on ravelry for the knit along uh, stay safe take care of yourselves and until next time happy knitting bye bye